evade tests? Uh, you have evaded me. Well, hello everyone. This is Robert from Black Belt Gaming. Sorry for the uh, pause mid-game. Real life has uh, kept me busy recently, but I am enjoying the process of learning how to play Mansions of Madness. And I'm enjoying trying to make it through this solo experience in the expansion Call of the Wild, this keeperless scenario. I don't think I'm going to make it, but uh, it's been a pretty good introduction to the game. But there is a rule that I have been missing. And uh, it definitely would have made some difference. Uh, it's called Evade Test. So all of those times I was trying to get Pete to back up so that he could use his sniper rifle. Uh, I would have needed to make a, an evade test to see if I could get away without getting attacked. So for those of you familiar with some of the other uh, Dungeons and Dragons type games, especially the later editions, this would be like provoking an attack of opportunity. So, uh, you can't just run away from them, you need to kind of skillfully dodge and, and, and get out of their uh, reach. But, we've also found out that during, uh, well, at this stage in the game, where I'm looking at these different cards, um, it is nighttime, and I would not have been able to use the sniper rifle anyway, so this weapon would pretty much be ineffective. That means that taking a look at those uh, rules, this game is hard. Well, at least it is for me here on my first playthrough. Let's see if we can keep going. Well, as you can see, there's still a lot of the board left unexplored. I'm back to my uh, investigator's turn here. And his status, well, it isn't looking too good. I've had um, a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, uh, of a break between the, the last session that I had here, or the last turns. So I'm trying to catch up and remind myself of where I was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like seven horror. Um, once I get to nine, I'm going to go insane, but I think I remember that that doesn't end the game. Uh, I believe if I run out of health, though, I think that will. So, uh, let's see what we can do. I do remember that this, uh, due to the pyromania, this room that I am in, and I know it's a forest outdoorsy place, but this is considered a room on this tile, it is on fire. And according to the rules, maybe it's just with this particular rule set for the keeperless scenario. It says that towards the end of the game round, um, you deal two damage to each monster in a room that is on fire. And investigators are dealt two damage at the end of their turn if they are in a room that is on fire. So if we hang around here, uh, we're gonna burn. Now I remember this creature uh, did a special attack on us before. Uh, Pete was hit with this, he failed his uh, test, and it said he can't perform any actions during this turn. And for a while um, I was thinking I'm not gonna be able to leave, I'm gonna be stuck there. But then someone posted on my channel and they were saying that uh, moving wasn't an action and I was kinda confused by that but I believe that's exactly right there is a movement step and then there's an action step so I think running away is exactly what I need to do because that's what's in my mind right your mind screams only one thought run and I can't do anything else but try to get out of there so, we've got two creatures in there, and I'm going to try to move out of there and get to safety someplace. 
that's about all I can accomplish. So I'm going to need to attempt evade checks against both of these monsters. All right, so we need to make a dexterity test modified by the monster's awareness. This is the white number in the top right corner. And if you pass the test, then you suffer no ill effect. But if you fail, the keeper may have the monster damage the investigator equal to the monster's damage value. Regardless of whether he passes or fails, the investigator may then move or perform the intended action. After having attempted to evade, the investigator may freely move and take actions without having to try to evade the same monster that turn. So if I'm trying to get away from this guy, minus three, then I think I'm going to have a pretty hard time getting away from this night gaunt. Uh, my dexterity, the dexterity check here, dexterity is seven, so subtracting three from that is going to take me down to four. So I'm going to need a four or less on my roll. And we got a three, so hey, that was good. We've evaded the first one. What about this guy? Well, I don't think he's quite as sharp. Uh, looks like his number is a one. So I think that actually gives us a bonus to run away from this thing. So with a dexterity of seven modified by that number, that's going to give us an eight. An eight or less. Wouldn't you know it? We got a nine. So we are damaged by the zombie for another two points. That's, uh, let's see, just reminding myself, that's this one. So two more points of damage on Pete. So seven points total. Uh, we can take 11. All right, it's uh, time to move Pete. We'll see if we can move him out of this, um, this area with the fire. Moving diagonally. Supposedly that's allowed. Um, I guess we'll try to move diagonally down here and then we can move once more and we'll move into this room called, what is it called, the Old Oak. Now we can't do any actions, we can't explore or anything, but we least, at least we got ourselves out of the fire. So we're not going to burn just yet. And that's all Pete can do, so um, it's time to move on to the bad guys. Alright, I think what we need to do now is move on to the next, um, the next event card. We're almost through this, but uh, let's see what happens. Self-sacrifice. The voices in your head are difficult to ignore. Each player resolves the reflex effect on his mania cards again. The player who has four or fewer sanity remaining receives a random physical trauma card. Uh-oh. All right, well, we've, we've got both of these, and these, these are going to hurt. Uh, especially, I think, this first one here. Once again, I think we're going to deal one damage and one horror uh, to any investigator in my room, and that's myself, so here we go. All right, that's eight horror and eight points of uh, health damage. And then we're screaming uh, pyromania again. Oh gods, kill it with fire. And we need to place a fire token in this room. Remember, we have this odd effect down here. We can't win the game unless at least one indoor room is on fire. So maybe I can get to this uh, barn or whatever it is. Um, maybe within the next turn, we'll see. But uh, light them up. All right, now the uh, old oak is on fire. And let's see what else we need to do. Um, we've done the reflex effects on the mania, mania cards. 
Then each player who has four or fewer sanity remaining, well that's definitely me, receives a random physical trauma card. All right, I, I haven't looked at these. I haven't shuffled these, so let's just take one. Uh, hearing loss. Yelling over the ringing. What? You want me to shoot now? You receive minus two dexterity to a minimum of one. All right, I don't know why I'm losing my hearing, but uh, something must have happened. And we're not done yet. Then choose a space containing two or more threat tokens and place a hound of Tendalos. Tendalos. In the space and discard two of the tokens. Then activate every monster. Man, what a long card. Two or more threat tokens. I think we may have that um, all the way over there. So let's find this uh, hound monster. Release the hounds. All right, here's this uh, thing, whatever it is. Kind of looks, um, I don't know, sort of serpent-like. I kind of thought it might be dog-looking or something, but uh, we remove the two threat tokens, and now this thing is on the board and ready to come after us. So activate each monster. Well, the monsters are just supposed to try to move toward the nearest investigator, and that's me. So let's move this guy one, two. Uh, he's probably smart enough to avoid the fire up there. But I just spotted something cool here. Um, you know, I thought this fire, fire bad. I thought this fire was bad, but if those guys follow me down here, that's going to end the monster's activation. They're going to get burned for two points of damage if they move into this area. That's kind of the timing of it, as far as I'm understanding. So, uh, let's, let's see what happens. Now, the other bad part of this is, although they might burn some, they're probably going to drive me absolutely insane when they come into my space, because I'm going to have to make a horror check. So let's take it one at a time. Probably this night knot would be the fastest moving one. And then two coming into my space. Uh, I think the horror check is going to be at minus two. So let's see. Let me double check what that was. Wasn't it willpower? All right, willpower minus two. That's going to give us a five. We got, I guess, what, 50 50 here? Let's see how it goes. We got a one. So we passed the first horror check. And then now the zombie. I guess he gets the same movement, uh, is also going to come down here, and we get a minus one on that one. So, um, what do we need near? Six or less. And we got a six. I think we're actually okay. We are still sane. So, Ashcan Pete is hanging in there, and, uh, now I think the fire burns these guys. So this thing had four points of damage so far, uh, but it's pretty tough. It's pretty scrappy here. It can take nine. So he's not gone. He's up to six damage though. All right, six damage on that one, but uh, zombie suffered two damage and he can take six. So he's up to four. Well, I was kind of hoping that one of those guys would drop, but they're a bit too tough. And I think that's going to end this turn. Wow. Well, that's going to give us one more turn to go in the deck to see if we can make it through the night. So let's see what happens. I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do here if I make it through the last card but yet I don't have an indoor room on fire due to the um, pyromania card. So I don't know what you do there. Do you just keep going or do you lose? I'm not exactly sure. 
Maybe that'll uh, come to that situation. Maybe we'll have to face that. Maybe we won't. Uh, please join me next time and, and we'll find out together. Once again, I really appreciate the advice you've been giving and, and spotting the mistakes I've made as I've gone along. Uh, if you saw anything this time, please don't hesitate to let me know. Catch you guys again soon. Thanks.